Ever wonder what are the keys and things you need to know before building a defense? Well, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three principles that are going to help you and set you up for success before you build a defense in Madden 18. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today's video is all about defense. It's all about creating a defensive scheme. And uh, in, in the big picture, what I want to do is give you three principles that you can apply to any season of Madden, any, any year. And this is going to help you before putting together a defensive system in Madden 18. So the first thing that you need uh, the ability to do on defense is to push the opponent where you want them to go. Defense is a chess game. There's no question about it. And when you're playing defense in Madden, one of the hardest things to do is force your opponent into certain throwing windows. You want to be the dictator. Uh, you want to be able to control the pace of the game. And the way you do that on defense is by utilizing a what I call a power play. And what I mean by that is a specific coverage that you feel comfortable in that's going to set the tone for the game. Now, uh, when I say coverage, I mean... Tampa 2, cover 4, cover 3, um, something along those lines. So if you look at this, it doesn't matter any formation. Uh, we'll build something today out of the 4-3. Uh, let's just work, or not the 4-3, let's work from the 4-6. So I haven't used 4-6 in a long time. So you would go through your plays, and then you would kind of look at different things. Now, remember the key to defense I've talked about several times. One of the key things you want to do is you want to use her the middle linebacker. But the interesting thing about the 4-6 defense is when you run a play like this cover two invert, um, this is a very powerful play. And the way the 4-6 defense is set up, it's like a 4-4. Um, as you see, you got four guys on the line here. you got these guys right here. And then you have this safety in the middle of the field. Now, uh, what you want to do if you're playing something like this, this now allows you to use the safety in the box. So now your box, and the box is just this area. So if Harrison is, he'll draw that line. He's the outside corner. Davis is the outside corner on this side. And that's what I would call the box. So, so anyways, what you want to do here um, is, is you want to start off with one play that's going to dictate the pace of the game. And so the, the best thing you can do here from this look, uh, we already know that out routes, if he wanted to throw an out route, if my opponent wanted to throw an out route, he could, just because we know that from the way the game works, from the way that we've learned it. So then what do you do? Well, when you're making a defensive scheme, you got to figure out what are you wanting to give up and what are you willing to uh, take away. You cannot take away everything in one play. That's why you need to dictate what they're going to be allowed to throw and what they're not. So... You have a couple of options. What I like to do with this is I'll, I'll might move these guys off the edge just to kind of make it look like they're blitzing. You can kind of move these guys around a little bit, and it, it makes your defense a little bit better just by the formation formation look itself. So you can do that. Uh, but then from there, we would want to play these guys, these, these uh, linebackers. We know that cloud flat um, in this year's game anyway doesn't do much. So you could run a cover two shell with your linebackers running the deep third. Um, that could be interesting. There's all kinds of things you could do from this. Um, you know, you could run cover four like that or whatever. But anyways, what I'm saying is here, you, you would want to establish that kind of a coverage. And whatever coverage it is, you want to run it the first drive. You would want to run this the entire first drive. So as you see here, if he wants to throw that, he can. But if he, you know, if he doesn't, then, he, you know, he's not going to be able to have anything on the play. So then what you would do is you would run this one play. And I, it doesn't have to be covered to him, but again, whatever your play is, you would run that one play uh, for the whole drive. And what's probably going to happen, to be quite honest with you, is they will eventually find the hole and they will exploit it and exploit it and exploit it. And what you're going to do is you're going to let them have it. And what that's going to do is it's going to reinforce to them that they can throw certain routes uh, at certain critical times. And they're going to begin to develop tendencies and they're going to have to rely on certain routes. So then what's going to happen is you're going to change it up on them. So the weakness of the cover two invert essentially is you don't have immediate flat coverage and your uh, deep vertical coverage is not the best because you have linebackers doing that. So what is something that we could do that would fix that problem? Well, what I like to do in that situation is uh, run, an, run an inside blitz. And inside blitz does 
if you look at it, so if we, if we just set it up exactly the same, we're going to baseline, we're going to press coverage. So now you're going to slide this guy off the edge. You're going to slide your uh, safety off the edge. You don't have to do this. Um, they can stay where they are, but I just like to do that. And then you're going to bring this guy in. Now you see how the, the running back's double teamed. If the running back stays in the block, then this guy on the left side here, Harrison, will blitz. If he doesn't, then Harrison's going to cover him. So your responsibility is to cover Jason Witten. Uh, that's pretty much what it, you know, at the end of the day, that's what you're going to have to do. So what's going to happen here is you know what they're probably going to do. So you're just going to run to the flat, run to the flat, run to the flat. They can't throw it, and they're going to have to look and be sacked. That's where you want to mix your pressure in with your coverage. So, for example, if we went back to cover to invert, we have that in our quick audibles. So if this is our base play, and we can do some other things to sure it up. What I like to do on this, honestly, is drop my um, ends into coverage just to into the seams there. I think it helps. to It does a really good job. The only problem with that is that then you, you have a little bit of another problem. If they're going to run the ball, you don't want to do that. So if you think they're going to run, don't, don't do that. If they, you know, if they really do, you can just fake blitz with Mitchell and hold him into the middle. But anyways, you're going to have good deep coverage, and you're just going to work it. You're going to work that coverage, and you're going to work that coverage, and you're going to work that coverage. And then the last, at a proper time, whatever the time is, then you're going to say, you know what? Screw it. No more coverage. And you're going to go all out blitz, and, and you're going you're gonna to catch them off guard, I'm telling you. So then what's going to happen is the game's going to be flowing, and you're going to need to be able to do it from zone. You're going to be able to need to do the inside blitz from zone. So then you just go to cover three, okay? And we do the same thing we just did. Now we're going to blitz Harrison off the edge. We're going to blitz Davis off the edge here. We're going to put these two guys in flats, hard flats. And then we're going to bring Mitchell down in the A-gap. Now, Mitchell's job is now going to look exactly like cover to invert. He is going to just flow into the middle. They're going to think it's cover to invert. And what you'll see here, they'll try to throw it to the flat, and we'll have a guy in that area. The pressure's going to come off the edges. Okay, so again, one other thing you could do with this, if you didn't want to do it that way, and this will save you a few more steps. So what you would do is you would set it up exactly like we just showed you. The only difference is you would put Harrison, you bring him out, you put him in a flat zone. You'd bring Davis down, you put him in a flat zone. And then you would blitz these two linebackers, bring Mitchell down. Okay, so now you have this covered shell, and you're going to work the middle of the field. Same thing. It's the inside pressure, double A gap, um, and then you're going to see those hard flats. That's essentially what you're going to do, uh, and you're going to only use that play in a very specific situ situation. You're not going to um, you're not going to use that play much. You, you're really not. Okay, but you know, in certain situations, it will be it, it will be useful to you. And you can mess around with it. You can get fancy. You can try to spy guys and do all these other things. But at the end of the day, the three principles of a successful defense is that you have a, a one coverage where you can force them to go to a certain thing. And then you have a second coverage that is designed to take away what you were giving up earlier. And then you have a third coverage, which is designed to look exactly like your first coverage, but is now from zone. You're still a little bit more protected because you have deep coverage. Um, whereas the cover zero blitz, you're all out man coverage. So you want to mix those three components in when you're building a defensive scheme. And essentially what it means is you want to have a base a base play. You want to have a counter play that you can throw, um, you know, on fourth and one, third and two, that kind of thing. And then you want to have uh, what I call a constraint theory play, which is basically something that looks very similar to your counter play but it, it takes away certain things that the, the other one wouldn't. Um, so whereas this, if you look at it, what they could do, if we were running inside blitz, if they really wanted to, they could hit this flat. They could still hit that, that little quick out. When you go to, um, when you go to um, this, this setup here, okay, it's going to be a little harder to hit that flat. You've got the hard flat out there. And you're going to make a play on the ball. So in essence, again, it's a little bit of a chess game. You you don't want to run five or six plays. You want to keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. Uh, but use those different hot routes. Use those adjustments 
to take away what your opponent's doing. But the key in defense is always to know, uh, just like in chess, when to make your move. Okay, it's like a boxy match. If you're throwing a jab, if you're throwing a jab, if you're throwing a jab, and then you need to throw a right hook to finish the guy off, you need to know when is the right time to throw the right hook. Okay, and we're going to be talking about that uh, in tomorrow's video. When is the right time to throw a right hook? So be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and that way you'll be able to see what we have coming for you tomorrow with when to throw a proper right hook. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.